Hello and welcome back. Today I am sharing with you some questions I received from a reader of mine. Sarah A from Switzerland. Thank you, Sarah, for keeping me on track and making sure that I make videos. <laughs> Who wants to know a little bit more about my writing process? So stay tuned. Okay, welcome back everyone. I'm Emily Harris. I write historical romances and today we are looking at a set of questions I received from one of my readers asking about some of the different aspects of my writing process. So, question number one. Was they was there a character that developed in a different way than you had planned while you were writing the story? Who and in what way? Yes. And I have a couple of examples because the biggest example you're not going to be able to see because I have not yet published the book, but the, the first book that I wrote in my first NaNoWriMo included a character who initially, in my first kind of renditions of this story, was the love interest. However, in the actual final product of this story, things had changed a lot to include characters, setting, background, you name it, everything changed. Except for kind of some of the central themes. And this particular character ended up becoming the villain in the new rendition of the book. And actually this character plus the old interaction I had thought of wound up becoming kind of the backstory for my female main character in this book. So if I ever get around to publishing that one, <clears throat> you will see that. But <clears throat> to give a more recent example, the character who changed the most is probably Lucy from my Colorado City series. She and uh, her romantic interest Rick were not actually supposed to be main characters in and of themselves. They were supplementary to the book I was trying to write, which was, her, which is now her Queen City Ranger. And these other characters came in just as extras to provide me with some backstory that I could create a novella for my readers about the backstory. What ended up happening was she was such a kind of driven, interesting, colorful character that I really enjoyed her. And it wasn't just me, <laughs> it was also my readers. Those readers who have read the prequel wound up wanting to know more about Lucy and Rick's story. How did it play out later? Because the first book in the series picks up 20 some odd years after that prequel. So, yes, uh, characters do change quite often and those are the most notable of my characters. All right, question number two. Are there any events in your books that were inspired by events in your own life and how did you change or incorporate them? So again, yes and no. I, my initial forays, my first forays into writing did include or have included a lot more of my personal observations. Just because it's what I knew, it's what I had, it's what had been stewing over in my head for the longest time. But up to now, I don't have any actual full events included in my books. I have little bits and pieces, snippets of life from me personally. Again, you're going to see that more in this other book that is still unpublished. Things like the grandmother character who 
has a hidden stash of chocolates in a drawer in her dresser. I got that totally from my grandmother who had the chocolate stash in the dresser drawer in her bedroom. <laughs> so little things like that I have incorporated. But no full events. Yet. I say yet because I do actually have an idea for a book which I hope to really play off of some events in my life which were interesting uh, while I was traveling, that sort of thing. And uh, kind of as a, almost as a game, ask my readers, okay, this book, I'm telling you now, has a lot of my life in it. It's going to be your job to decide which of these events are true and which are not. So it's an idea. It's an idea for the future. But as of right now, no full events, just little snippets. Question three. Was there any moment in any of the books where you had no idea where to go next with the story? Which book slash which scene? How did you get out of it? What gave you new inspiration? Yes, I know this has happened several times, actually. Most notably, I always go back to a scene in my first book, Her Queen City Ranger, where my characters are squabbling about something. They're arguing and I know I have to get them from where they are, from point A to point B, and I have run out of stuff to happen to get them there. And so I was just kind of frustrated with that and I decided, okay, I'm just gonna let it go where it goes. I was trying to dabble with a little bit of snarky conversation between the two of them as they're arguing. And what ended up happening is the heroine, Sophie, charged off, rode off on her own, and winds up getting stuck in a thunderstorm and having to get rescued. None of that was planned, and that whole, that, that entire scene of her running off and having to get rescued was perfect for what I needed but I had no clue it was going to play out that way until I was actually sitting there typing. It was one of those moments that you'll hear authors talk about every now and again where the characters just kind of took over and did their own thing and told me, sit there and you better type fast enough to get this all down. <laughs> so that is the main time that happened. So I didn't do anything specific to get out of that. It just kind of worked out. Question four, what do you do to get out of a writer's block? So this kind of plays into the last question. And what I do, for any of you who are fans of um, the TV show House, I kind of get into house mode. I start asking questions. I start, I might dabble with the outline, just brainstorm. Really that's it, just brainstorm. Come up with, well, I need to get here or what could happen there and I have point A and point C. What is every possible way I can get from this one to this one? Good, bad, indifferent. Just get every idea out there and start playing with it. Once I have some ideas to play with, once I start fleshing things out a bit, then the thing would be start asking questions. Okay, my character does this. Why? Well, my character wants to do this. Why? Just why, 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 like the little three-year-old. Just keep asking why until I have a clear idea of what's going on. <laughs> because it is that clarity, that idea, uh, or clarity of idea, actually, which is going to allow me to write with ease. If I don't have enough of the details figured out, I get stuck. I'm going to get stuck. And that is not to say that I have to have all of the details before I get going because that is an equally marshy kind of mire to get stuck in for me. So I just have to have enough detail that I can keep going and that's generally what gets me out of that block. Alright, and lastly, do you write your book from start to finish? Or do you write specific scenes that you feel inspired to write 
and piece the story together. A little of both. <clears throat> I tend to write chronologically, but I have no set mental rule about that. I, I start out with a general idea and it progressively gets a little bit more detailed, a little bit more outlined. I don't outline my entire novel at once because I like to leave room for things that change. So I might have ideas for different scenes that come at different parts of the book or ideas for scenes that I really, I know I want to include somehow, some way, but I don't know where. And I will write notes on that. I usually will not write out an entire scene before I know the surroundings of it just because I don't want to spend the time on doing that and then later on find out it doesn't fit. So I will write out notes, I will keep it in mind, and I do that throughout. Every time something new comes to my brain, I'll write notes about it. But the more detailed I get, the closer to the full outline I get, I start to become very chronological in how I am doing my writing. So there you have it, a little bit of both. <laughs> okay, and that is it. So thank you very much for watching, for participating. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any additional questions for me about anything, my stories, my writing process, please do include those in the comments below. And once I collect a few of them, I am happy to do another one of these videos uh, because I find them fun. If you enjoyed the video also, please remember to like it or what is it here? It's a give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel so that you get the notifications of when additional videos come out. And until the next video, Happy reading!